Alrighty, boys. As you guys know about a title here, I'm about to rant on about game number five between Trap and Fantasy in the... What is it again? Is it the... It's the round of eight for the IEM World Championship at uh, Katowice for StarCraft 2. So, in case you don't know anything about StarCraft 2, or if you don't like listening, listening to me rant, or if you don't know anything about... Or if you don't give a shit about anything what I'm trying to say... Don't watch this video. It's just going to be me ranting off for about 10 or 15 minutes or even 20 minutes about what fantasy did wrong in that video or in that game. So let's get on to it. First of all, just the backdrop. Fantasy and Trap playing first round or, or the first uh, the first game for day number three of the World Championship at IEM Katowice. Uh, or kind of whatever the however the fuck that name is pronounced. Um... Trap goes up two games, and then Fantasy comes back two games, so it's now uh, tied 2-2, uh, match, final match point. Um, so whoever wins that is going to take the best of five and move on. A loser gets dropped out, knocked out of the tournament entirely because it's single Elam, uh, single Elam format. So, Fantasy... So here's how Game 5 plays out. Again, I'm not a StarCraft professional analyst. I just watch for fun. I don't play the game at all, so what I could be saying is complete bullshit. So please don't judge me too harshly, but this is just what I'm trying to... It, what I saw just kind of made me angry enough to make a video about this. Kind of like how you know I made a video about the last game between Parting and Fa uh, Flash at uh, Home Story Cup 10. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, game number 5, Trap opens up... I don't want to say... Well, yeah, basically it opened up standard as far as I could tell. Um, Fantasy does a few drops. Uh, he manages to sneak in after a couple of um, of mediocre drops that didn't really get anything done. He manages to sneak into uh, Widowmines, into um, into Traps Natural on, uh, what's the map called again? Inferno, no, not Inferno, but Vani Research Station? I think it's Vani Research Station. I could get the maps completely wrong. They're, they're, it's one of the new maps, so I'm not really familiar with them right now. But, um, anyways, Fantasy drops uh, Traps Natural with two Widow Mines. One of them hits, uh, or one of them hit, tries to go for a probe that's going to a simulator, so it doesn't do anything. The other one gets five probes, so technically speaking, Fantasy is in, is in a pretty decent position. He's got a bit of a lead, not anything to sell right home about, but he's got a lead for sure. Um, so after that, Fantasy didn't see the uh, the dark shrine that trap was making because the pathing of his uh, of his uh, medivacs uh, you know that he was using for his drops didn't see them uh, or didn't see the dark shrine uh, being constructed or being warped in whatever the fucking technical lingo is for that but despite that fa uh, fantasy kind of had the game sense that it's tell that that was coming so he already had a turret in his main and turret in or no, he didn't have a turret in his natural. The cast was that he had uh, he had a turret in his natural, but there was none uh, when the first DTs arrived because Fantasy didn't know that the DTs were actually coming. He just built that turret just in case in his main base. And admittedly, the turret in his main base was technically in a good position because it covered a whole uh, the the general center of his main base. But he only had one turret at the time, so the DTs come in. Um, he could have used a scan. Actually, now that I think about it, did he have a turret in his natural mineral line? I, I don't know. I don't I don't remember the entire thing because it all went really fast. But he drops trap drops in three uh, three DTs in a warp prism. So those DTs are wandering are, are starting to wander around a base and create havoc uh, for fantasy. Fantasy drops a couple scans even though he has a couple missile turrets up because the DTs are uh, you know the, the DTs are running around line inside of the missile turrets, so obviously they can't get seen uh, even though the missile turrets there. Uh, so yeah, Fantasy uses uh, drops a few scans. Eventually, cleans up the first wave of DTs. Now, by this point, this is the same problem that I had with the casters from the uh, from that who were casting Flash versus Parting. Oh, I think I just exited. Okay, never mind. Uh, this is the same problem that I had with the casters who were casting the final game between Flash and Parting at Home Story Cup 10. Um, that you know, they said that oh my God, Parting's going for this for this opening, like this aggressive opening. If he can't get, any, he's not getting any, like significant damage done. He's gonna lose his game. Flash is in a good, great position. These same casters are not the same casters. You guys know what I mean. But these casters for this time for the game between Trap and uh, Fantasy were doing the same spiel again. Oh my God, Fantasy is in a great position. Uh, Trap's DT drop didn't work at all. He only got a couple of SCV kills. You know, Fantasy is in a great position. He can't lose that. Like he's got such a huge lead. He can't lose from here now, can he? Like traps, traps gonna go work, gonna have to work so hard to come back from this. But no, like fuck, fuck the casters. The, even even someone like me who only play who only, who doesn't even play this fucking game and watches this watches 
just watches tournaments for fun, for ca like casually, can tell that in TVP, Protoss, I'm a little bit biased towards Terran here, obviously, if you, if you guys can tell already. Um, but Protoss has a lot of ways to come back. They have a lot of opportunities that they can just force open in order to come back. One of which is DTs. And even if the first DT wave doesn't work, it's not like Fantasy did like a crippling amount of economic damage over at Trap's, uh, Trap's bases. Sure, he got five probe kills in his natural middle line, and he, uh, in one of his earlier drops before that one, he had, uh, you know, caused Trap's main mineral line to lose a lot of mineral, uh, a lot of mining time because uh, he dropped two mines. And he didn't really have adequate uh, detection at that time, so he had to pull all the probes away. He didn't lose any of them, but admittedly, he did lose a lot of mining time. But that doesn't really matter as much as actually losing a whole handful of probes to a successful mineral mine, uh, widow mine hit. So. It's not like Trap's uh, economy was like seriously hurting like a lot. So losing those three first three DTs in that first DT wave wasn't that big of a deal to be honest with you. Even though they didn't get as many SCV kills as they should have gotten in order to pay for themselves. So what happens is F Fantasy. I think Fan Fantasy again. I don't know what the players are thinking here. This is all just my conjecture. But I think Fantasy saw that uh, saw the situation after he took out uh, uh, you know took out the first three DTs, it was like, okay, I can start going up to him, those are all the DTs that Trap's gonna make because of how, how much uh, pressure I've been giving him, and just because he's he's lost three TTs in one fell swoop, he's not gonna make any DTs after that, right? No. So what ends up happening is F Fantasy sends a lot of his troops up to the ma natural main base, or to his, um, up to um, Trap's side of the side of the map to pressure Trap's third base. And he does shut down uh, Trap's third base once or twice, maybe even three times. I, I wasn't really counting, uh, you know, exactly keeping count. But, so that while that's going on, Trap's still, you know, wandering around with his own DTs, and he, he with his warp present, he warps in, I think he warps in a few more DTs, and over the course of a couple of minutes, or maybe like five minutes or so, I don't really know exactly how long he, he kept up his DT pressure, but he kept making DTs. He kept making them from the pylon that was over at uh, Fantasy's fourth base, uh, to all, all the way to the left of Vani Research Station, not the one that's right above his min uh, his natural. Uh, he had a pylon there, and he kept using his warp present until it finally got uh, taken out by one of, um, what was it, one of... Uh, or from a counter drop from Fantasy. Sorry, my head just went blank there. So until that time, it was constantly harassing with DTs, and because Fantasy didn't see that, um, didn't see the pylon over to his over to his fourth base, and because he wasn't really paying attention to the fact that trap like DTs are still a possibility. Not only was he uh, not only was he supply uh, supply capped a couple of times. There was one supply cap that came in when it was around like the hundred supply mark, I think it was, where a couple at that time a couple of DTs from that pylon from Fantasy's fourth base just waltzed right up his main because there was no because the supply depots were down. I don't think I don't even think he had a full wall up there either. Uh, just waltzed in. They went straight for the mi missile turret in the main because uh, main and because it wasn't in the in the middle of the middle line and, and instead. In more in the middle of the main base, they got to it really easily, and because, like I said, because Fantasy was supply capped, there was no reinforcements coming out, or there were no reinforcements coming out to kill them uh, as they were coming out of the barracks. So two DTs can take out a missile turret really fucking easily. Everyone knows that DTs do a shit ton of damage in both Brood War and StarCraft 2, more in StarCraft 2, in fact. I think they do 45 per swipe because they can kill SCD FCVs in one one shot if, uh, without upgrades. So yeah, 45 damage without uh you know for between two of them, they just cut down Mills Tour really easy, and now there's no detection. Fantasy had already, uh, I think Fantasy either I don't know what the energy was on his uh was like on his uh, orbitals uh when the first Mills Tour went down. Because of that, now Fantasy has to concentrate on two things at once. First, his force, his uh, his little posse of of um, of uh, attacking units up in uh, Trap's third base that's trying to shut down tra Trap or deny Trap the ability to get his own third base up while he's trying to get his own up at the same time, and you know trying to deal with all the DTs that are wandering around his base, causing lots of havoc and. Not only that, but also he was uh, he was again supply uh, supply capped at around the 140 mark, but that's uh, for that's for another time. So then, 
Trap knows, realizes that Fantasy is fucking being distracted by his DTs, and Trap realizing that his DTs are actually doing something after he's kept sending them over and over and over uh, until, you know, there's this one lucky DT wave that actually breaks through and does something. Trap decides, okay, I'm going to use this chance. Fantasy, I'm going to make on the chance that Fantasy is not going to be concentrating two places at once, and I'm going to push my Colossus for my own force that I've been building up for, you know, this this entire time with Colossi and Thermal Lance, and then just push uh, push the uh, the harassing fantasy's harassing units out of my third base so I can finally finally establish it and he does and after that the supply his supply count was equal at around like 130 130 or something like that so at that moment I was like at, right when I saw that trap had pushed managed to push out uh, fantasy's units from his third base and he secured his third base and he and I looked at the supply count I was like okay trap's gonna win this there's no way uh, Taryn can can win from here unless they pull off some insane like you know micro tricks or go for like a base trait scenario because rule of thumb that I've learned from just watching Starcraft 2 tournaments is that Protoss whenever you as a Terran or or Zerg like Protoss and Zerg if you are on equal footing at that time at that time of the game like around 13 to 14 or 15 minute mark that you know 13 to 15 minute mark if you're on equal supply with the Protoss, and it's obvious that you can't get you can't get a, a supply lead uh, anytime soon. You are fucked. You are done. There is no way as you, for you as T or as Terran or as Zerg for you to win. It's just physically impossible. Protoss units are just better. They are you know they have fucking they, in general they're just better than all the other races units units like individually. So. Uh, so you know logically speaking, on a equal supply cat or on an equal supply. Protoss is not going to lose. They are just not, just not. They're just not going to unless you're at 200, 200. Then that's a little bit of a different story. But this time, at this time, it was 130 versus 130 or 140 against 140, something like that. I don't know exactly. But at that point, supply caps were relatively equal. You can basically pass them off as equal. And Protoss, I knew Protoss, Trap was going to win from that point on. There was no way for Fantasy to have, uh, to have, um, you know, won from there. But the nail in the coffin that. Basically, that basically said, told me like, oh yeah, Trap is 100% guaranteed going to get this. Is when Fantasy load up these units into Medivacs and just decide to send them straight up the fucking middle of the map. Like, okay, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a professional StarCraft 2 player by any means. But for God's sake, why would you send your Medivacs full of units up this up straight up the middle of the map, especially when you know that your you, the units that you've been sending over to Traps in third base ha, uh, have been wiped out by Colossi that you know you've probably seen coming straight down the map. You know they're there. You know he's gonna push because he realizes that he's done a lot of damage with his DTs and stuff like that. Why just send them up the middle of the map? Just fucking mind blown. Like, what are you doing? You are throwing the game. They're, basically, game five can be summed in two or three words. Or four words. He threw the game. Simple as that. Fantasy didn't acknowledge the, the fact that the DT still had killing potential or severe damage potential. Even if it didn't get a lot of SCV kills, the fact that they were still diverting a lot of its attention still made the DTs worth it in, in favor of Trap. Also, the fact that he just sent his medevac, boosted medevacs right into a squad of uh, of of, of uh, stalkers, and ma and they managed to take out a medevac full of units. I think there was like four medevac, uh, four more marauder marauders in that medevac that they shot down. That was just, that's just sloppy. There's no other way to put it. Fantasy just played absolutely sloppy in that la last game because he let himself get, he let himself basically focus on way too many things because of the fact that the DTs was pulling his concentration apart. He couldn't multitask efficiently enough and effectively enough to not only de continue effectively denying Trap's third base, but also to deny, to shut down Trap's DT, DT assault completely. He managed to uh, shut it down pretty decently in the first time around. It wasn't the best job, but it was okay. It was acceptable. But every, uh, every other DT wave after that, Fantasy couldn't deal with it effectively because he was supply capped. He was he he basically kept donating units, and all that rolls into the fact that Fantasy lost. The Fantasy just threw that game. As soon as he lost that medevac, I lost all. I just lost all respect for Fantasy for that game in particular. I still respect Fantasy as a uh, as a player. Obviously, he's obviously a professional uh, StarCraft two player. I know he's he was very successful in the past, and I know he 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 has potential to be very successful this year too. But after 3-0-ing Rain, like, 
like, come on, man. A 3-2 is obviously an impressive showing against Trap because Trap is an excellent Protoss player, but going out like that, losing a final game to that is really underwhelming. And it, it was just a huge letdown because that cannot be described in any other way except as a throw. Because it was. He just kept donating units. He didn't he didn't acknowledge, uh, he didn't respect Trap's uh, DT assaults. In fact, it's just a bad idea to not to not be on your toes after a first DT wave because you never know if Protoss is going to be a scumbag and throw even more DTs at you. I think pretty sure Fantasy, I'm very, very certain that Fantasy was just like, oh, he's not going to send any more DTs over to me uh, after those first three sent that I killed, right? Ho, 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 ho. No, you fucking idiot. There's always going to be DTs. Like, what don't you understand? If there's a Dark Shrine, you might as well fucking use it. Especially because you didn't deal, deal enough economic damage to, to trap on the, on the, with your drops beforehand anyway. Like, come on. Like, really? And it's, while I know it's easy for me to criti sit here on my ass and criticize um, fantasy like that, yeah, it's kind of unfair to, for me to treat him like this. But if he's gonna, uh, if he's going to expect to advance past the round of eight in the World Championship for IEM, you have to play. You have, you kind of have to play it. You have to know when to play it safe. You, you kind of do. And if I know how, if I know when F Fantasy should play it safe, he should probably know too because he's the pro player. I'm just gonna put that out there. And uh, there was also one more thing that I wanted to end on. Oh yeah. Both in Flash versus Party from Home Story Cup 10, and now uh, get in the round of eight and Trap versus uh, Fantasy. Both the Terran players have lost game number five or the last game. I'm pretty sure Flash versus Party was a best of seven. So, I, uh, so it's it, it, regardless, it's the last. They both lost the last games. They are both Terran, and both Flash and Fantasy are veteran Brood War players. I don't know if this is just me or if this is like a re recurring theme here, but I'm I want to say I want to attribute part of Fantasy's failure in game number five can be attributed to the fact that Fantasy was getting into this brood war mentality. I don't know. It, 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 I don't know exactly how much of brood war mentality was playing into this game here, uh, and certainly I haven't pl I haven't watched enough com competitive StarCraft brood war in order to tell this for sure. But you know, it could be. I'm getting this feeling that Fantasy was thinking to himself, "Oh, I've got this game in the bag. Like, I there is no way that I can lose from here now that I've shut down Trap's DT like DT rush, or no, it wasn't a DT rush, but DT you know a DT attack." Like, maybe Fantasy was thinking that way. I don't know. But that kind of arrogance... If, he, if, if, if assuming that Fantasy did have that kind of mentality after he shut down uh, uh, Trap's initial D, uh, DT wave, if he did have that mentality, that kind of arrogance is unacceptable. You can't have that. You cannot assume anything is already determined until the other guy types GG and leaves the game for you to win. You can't assume any of that. You just can't. Especially not in a, a, a competitive atmosphere like this, where you know you're up against a player who's using a race who can come back very easily. You know, you, Protoss, in my honest opinion, is the easiest race to come back with uh, out of all three races in StarCraft 2, just because of how the how the game works out, uh, or just because of how Protoss operates as a race in the context of StarCraft 2. You know, they've got warp ins, they've got invisible units that are always fucking cloaked, they've got oracles. Like, I'm going to refrain from calling them overpowered because there's a lot of ways for the other two races to deal with them, but they're certainly very key units to use in order to get give yourself a little bit of, you know, leeway to making yourself come back from a difficult, a difficult position. Just gonna throw that out there right now. Fantasy should have seen that coming, and he should have known that, you know, there was still a very real possibility, no matter how minute, that, you know, regarding the fact that he could still lose, which he did. And for anyone who loses that way, from perceived advantage, I don't know, I just, I don't have any pity for them. I didn't have any pity uh, for when Flash lost against Parting uh, on the final map. 
uh, in their best of seven for a home story cup ten. I don't have. I can't say any, I have any uh, pity for fantasy losing game number five here at IEM World Championship. After that, I was just like, uh, when when the when the camera on stream panned to uh, fantasy uh, after when it was clear that he had lost, like basically when Trap's army was round right top his for, for production and slaughtering everything when he, when his when his fantasy uh, supply was dropping beneath fifty, when Traps was at like one hundred seventy or something, when they panned to fantasy's face, like you could see that fantasy was like, what the fuck just happened? Like how did this happen? And I was like. When I, when, it, when I saw Fantasy at that moment, I was like, dude, I can't feel sorry for you. You fucking brought this on yourself, man. You should you should have dealt with this better. You know, I, I expected more of you here. You know, if the casters say you had an advantage, I won't doubt them. But, you know, if it was an advantage that you, could, you just lost that easily, then, well, I don't know. You didn't really have an advantage in the first place. So, I'm just going to cut it here. Like I said, I was... I, I, called it. I was going to talk for 20 minutes, right? So yeah, um, not going to uh, dwell on that much further. If you, I mean, this was just basically a 20 minute rant about the same thing that happened. This is basically a, the the second rendition of Home Story Cup 10 Grand Finals between uh, Flash and Party. I'm going to keep saying that over and over because this is literally the exact same situation, just a different way, just a different manner that it had panned out. You know, the Terran player holds uh, the Protoss Assault thinks he's got the upper hand, you know, thinks he's okay, and then he loses because Protoss. Like, okay, Pro a lot of people complain about Protoss, and I kind of don't like Protoss too, but come on. You know, that's no excuse for you to lose a map from a position where you should, in quotation marks, have an advantage. So yeah, I'll just stop here before I piss the, piss the rest of the internet off.